India's AI future is up for grabs. On one side, you've got Silicon Valley giants who have dominated this technology for years. And on the other, you've got Reliance, the same company that disrupted India's digital economy with Jio. And now Mukesh Ambani says he's going to do it again with artificial intelligence. But here's the twist. He's not fighting big tech. He's actually partnering up with them. Google, Meta, and maybe even OpenAI to build India's AI on Indian soil and under Indian control. Welcome to our weekly Indian startup new show. I am Pankaj, your host, and you are watching Backstage with Millionaires. And before we start, I want to say that this channel is part of Zerodha Zero One Network. So the main news item we are talking about today is Reliance's AI gamble, which many people are already calling India's most aggressive play on Gen AI. And let's start with a big announcement. At this year's AGM, Mukesh Ambani launched Reliance Intelligence, a brand new subsidiary dedicated to AI. And its job is clear, build massive data centers in Jamnagar, hire top researchers, roll out AI services for sectors like healthcare and education, and work with the world's best tech companies to make it all happen. Now that's a lot of things, so let's talk about it one by one. The most important is Reliance Intelligence, which is actually a $100 million joint venture with Meta, where Reliance will hold 70% and Meta 30%. Together, they'll bring Meta's open source Llama models to Indian enterprises, from customer service to finance. But what's important is that all of it will be hosted in India under Indian governance. The next piece is building massive AI data centers. And when I say massive, I mean it. Reliance is planning gigawatt scale data centers powered by its own clean energy. An analyst at Morgan Stanley estimate that just one gigawatt facility would need nearly 678,000 NVIDIA B100 chips. And that kind of infrastructure is exactly what India has been missing. Again, Reliance is not doing this alone. They have teamed up with Google Cloud to build a dedicated AI cloud region in Jamnagar so that Indian businesses and even government projects can run on local AI-ready servers. And while it's not official yet, reports say that Reliance is in talks with OpenAI too. Now you might be thinking, wait, isn't this contradictory? Reliance says it does not want big tech controlling India's AI, but then it goes ahead and partners with them. Well, actually, this is the same strategy Reliance used in the telecom space. Remember how Jio started with free data and dirt cheap 4G? Well, within a few years, it had become India's number one telecom operator, and it today has around 500 million customers. But Jio did not do it by itself. It worked with global rivals, companies like Facebook, Google, Intel, and Qualcomm. And together, they invested more than $20 billion into Jio platforms. In exchange, Jio gave them access to India's huge user base, but Jio kept control of the market. And there's actually a word for this. Economists call this co-operation, cooperating with your competitors to grow faster than you ever could alone. This playbook worked in telecom, and now Ambani is applying it to AI as well. Reliance actually wants to learn from big tech. It wants to leverage their models and cloud expertise, and then lock all of it inside Indian infrastructure, powered by Indian energy, and distribute it through Jio's 500 million strong network. And this is not just theory, Reliance is already building AI into its products. Geo Hotstar with 300 million paying customers is adding features like Rhea, a voice assistant to help you find shows, and voice print which clones voices so your favorite actors can speak in your own language. They've also unveiled GeoFrame, smart glasses with built-in AI, and GeoPC which turns any screen into a full AI-powered computer through the cloud. So why does all of this matter? Well, it's because the AI race is not just about building smarter chatbots. It's about who controls the compute, the infrastructure, and the distribution. The US has Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. China has Baidu and Alibaba. And India till now had no one, and Reliance is trying to fill that gap. It wants to make India what it calls the world's first truly AI-native digital economy. So here is the big question for you. Can Reliance pull off the same trick it did with Geo by using global partners to leapfrog into the future? Or are there some big roadblocks that the company won't be able to tackle? Let me know in the comments. Alright, next up, India's space program just reached a new milestone. And this one did not come from a rocket launch, it came from a chip. At Semicon India 2025, ISRO unveiled Vikram 32, a 32-bit processor designed and built right here in India. And this chip is built to power the computers that sit inside India's rockets and satellites. In fact, the first batch of Vikram 32 chips was successfully tested on board ISRO's PSLV C60 mission. Now, making chips is not new for ISRO. They've actually done it before. In fact, a 16-bit version called Vikram 16 built by ISRO has flown on Indian rockets since 2009. But Vikram 32 is a big upgrade. It's fast more capable, and designed to handle the extreme condition of space, from radiation to long-duration mission. Also, 
so this achievement is bigger than just space. Vikram 32 also signals where India's semiconductor industry is headed. In 2021, India rolled out its India Semiconductor Mission, with incentives worth 76,000 crore rupees, supporting new fabs and packaging plants by Tata, Micron, CG Power, and Foxconn across multiple states. Which means India does not just have the capabilities to design chips, pretty soon we'll be able to mass produce them at scale as well. So while Vikram 32 is not the most advanced chip in the world, but that's not the point. For India, the priority is reliability and independence. Chips like this will power rockets, defense systems, and industrial equipments. Sectors where trust matters more than cutting-edge performance. Now moving on to some quick news updates. Boat has partnered with Bengaluru-based startup Hardware to co-develop its first India-made chip, the Indus 1011. And these will be assembled in India by Tata Electronics. Boat is planning to roll out the chip in its premium Nirvana range next year and integrate it into 25% of its devices by 2026. Next, Ola Kritrim has laid off about 50 employees in its linguistics team, cutting roles in languages like Bengali, Malayalam, and Punjabi as part of its strategic restructuring drive. This is actually Kritrim's third round of layoffs since June, taking total job cuts this year to nearly 200 employees. Next up, Urban Company and Boat have both received semis not to go public. In case of Urban Company, they are planning to raise 1900 crore rupees at a valuation of 15,000 crore rupees. Also, Boat is looking to list at a 13,000 crore rupees valuation. And since it chose to opt for the confidential filing route, we're not sure how much they're planning to raise through their IPO. Next up, according to a Bloomberg report, OpenAI is scouting for local partners to build a data center in India with at least one gigawatt capacity, which is a massive scale considering that most hyperscale data centers in India today are in the 50 to 100 megawatt range. And this is expected to be a part of OpenAI's The Stargate project. Next up, Aether Energy has unveiled Project Redux, which is a futuristic electric scooter concept built on their new EL platform. And Redux introduces features like true keyless entry, an adaptive stance that lowers when you lean in, a Morph UI vertical display that changes with your riding style, throttle haptics, and even a takeoff mode for instant acceleration at traffic lights. With Redux, Aether is showcasing how responsive and tech-driven the future of EVs can be. Alright, now let's move into the funding news segment for today's video. This week, Indian startups raised a total of $158 million, which is slightly higher than last week's $113 million. And now let's look at some of the companies that have raised funds this week. The first one I want to talk about is a Gurugram-based e-commerce startup called City Mall. It is an online shopping platform that brings affordable groceries and daily essentials directly to your neighborhood, especially in tier 2 and tier 3 towns where big e-commerce platforms don't always reach. And they have raised $47 million in their Series D round. After that, we have a Bengaluru-based online learning platform called Seekho. Think of it like a Netflix for quick learning. Instead of long lectures, it offers bite-sized 3-5 to five minutes videos across topics like digital skills, business tips, language lessons, money-saving apps, and even ways to earn online, all in Indian languages. And they have raised $28 million in their Series B round. Following that, we have a Bengaluru-based quick commerce platform called First Club. But instead of focusing on speed, First Club actually focuses on quality. Think of it like a membership-based delivery service that brings you premium groceries and everyday essentials, but only after each item has been tested, tasted, and vetted. And they have raised $23 million in their Series A round. Next, we have a Bengaluru-based consumer electronic brand Cousin that builds smart, reliable power and charging gadgets designed and made in India. One of their flagship products is this mini router UPS, which keeps your Wi-Fi running for up to 8 hours in case you have a power cut. And they have raised 5 crore rupees in their seed round. And finally, we have Bengaluru-based Edge Hacks, a startup that builds all-in-one boards to help you make smart devices like drones, robots, or industrial machines. Normally, you need separate paths for processing, storage, Wi-Fi, and coding, but Ajax combines all of that into one compact system. And they have raised 1.4 crore rupees in their seed round. Alright, that's all the startup news I have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.